Hey everyone, this is Todd Hazelton with MobileBurn.com and today we're checking out the Kin 1 and the Kin 2 here. Two new phones from Verizon Wireless. The Kin 1 uh, retails starting tomorrow online for $49.99 with a one year contract and a $100 mail-in rebate. Uh, and Kin 2 will retail for $99.99 with a $100 mail-in rebate and the two year contract with Verizon Wireless. So let's get started with an unboxing here. We'll start with the Kin 1 in this video untubing I guess you could say not quite a box just recycled material it feels like alright here's the phone itself Kin 1 QWERTY messaging device put this aside for one sec we'll go through the box All right, Microsoft, you turned me on. <laughs> so a manual of actually sort of like a brochure of everything you can do with the phone. From camera to web, music entertainment, the Kin Studio, your settings, dashboard, little information on SAR ratings. Both phones come with a 14 day trial Zune Pass. You can redeem it by going to zune.net slash kin. Otherwise it costs $14.99 a month and that gives you 10 MP3s that you can actually keep at the end of the month after uh, filling it up with unlimited music. Product safety and warranty guide. Consumer information about radio frequency emissions and responsible driving. All right. And important customer information. that together here. The kind of accessories we have. Sharp stereo headset. You get the buds there. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Perfect. There it is right there. Micro USB cable. And if you want to plug it into the wall, works like that. Nice Kin logo there. All right, that's what's in the box. Let's try powering up the phone here, and we'll go through some of its offerings. Now, I've already set up the phone. When you first turn it on, uh, you're prompted to enter in your Facebook, Twitter, uh, MSN account, um, all kinds of accounts, uh, so that it can automatically pull down the contents for the home screen here which you'll see is uh, is primarily based on central networking or social networking rather <laughs> you can see the screen is quite nice it kind of reminds me of the Palm Pre the way it's uh, sort of just looks like it's right below the display there almost as if the lights coming right off the surface alright here's the home screen Now for privacy's sake, we don't have all of our friends showing up here, um, but where you can see these tips, it says what day is it, keyboard and screen, you decide sort of how to use the phone. These are all uh, usually just profile pictures and their status updates. And here you can uh, actually click and change your own, I could say, you know, testing the Kin 1 and share it with uh, Facebook here or Twitter and just hit share. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. And this button right here serves as a back button. Here we have the user interface. You can see it's uh, three screens there. So this one, oh here you go, we have some of our updates coming in now from Twitter. Uh, you can see that it's their just status update and their picture. The pictures are taking some time to load Go to the right. Favorite contacts. Here are a couple I pulled in from Facebook. You hit plus. You can go through your uh, contact list here and add one, and they and they pop up right there. So I wrote about a little bit my hands-on today. One of my biggest gripes so far is that 
here the phone is in your pocket, right? You pop it open. You want to make a phone call, you can't write from this screen here, and I think that you should be able to. I would like to have seen a soft button for phone call. Instead, you have to turn over here, click phone, wait for this loading screen, and then you can dial. So I thought that was a little awkward. It just would have been nice, you know, if there was a hardware key, um, which we'll get into as I move around the phone. There was a hardware key to, to place a phone call or something a little quicker than, you know, shooting through the system there. Anyway, so here on the side you can hit this, switch quickly between recently used apps and maps, or apps. Um, it's kind of like here you can grab phone also. It's still, it's still you know, you hit recent then phone, but that's because I just opened it. All right, recent browser, which I'll show you in a second. We'll go back. Okay, so here's far left here, our app screen. One thing, glaringly absent, there is not a chat application. Now, for a messaging phone, it seems like you'd have AIM or Gchat or something installed, but it's not. And this is all you get. There's not an app store. So you have messages. I'll type to my fake number here. Send. Oh, it has my little avatar picture there, and uh, the message went through. Email seems a little sluggish here, but you know, not awful. Again, the, the text in display is actually pretty nice. Go back, that was a Gmail account I added. There's a whole list of, um, actually, I think we can go through it here and I can show you. Of uh, accounts, here you go. If we want to add an account, that was in our mobile mail. But you can add uh, Windows Live Hotmail, AOL Mail, Yahoo Mail, Microsoft Exchanger, and IMAP and POP account. Very easy to set up, wasn't a problem. I'll go through here, this is what's, uh, I think, really going to make these phones the most attractive, you know, besides the, the comfortable keyboard, is uh, the Zune player on them. Here you can use um, your Zune Pass. So here I just found Man, it's not letting us oh it's not available, okay. Well that's unfortunate. Good song. Anyhow you can search for uh, artists there and I have some music preloaded here. You know, definitely an awesome user interface, especially for a phone here. It's almost just like using, you know, a Zune because most of the interface is the same. So, pretty awesome. We'll go out. There's also a radio. Uh, you need the headphones to use that. Just what the error message there just said. Go through this phone has a, a five megapixel camera um, as opposed to the eight megapixel camera on the Kin 2. Let's see if I can. That was weird. I was in the software there, but I couldn't find somewhere to take a picture. So you can use location, I'll say uh, once, not always. Now you see the 
flash really threw that one off. And that one. <laughs> but it's dark here. Um, go back. Alarm app. Pretty simple. You can just add you know, new alarms. Nothing crazy there. Feed reader lets you add uh, RSS feeds. Quickly grab news. Here we have, you know, Facebook or Kin Scoop. It's taking a while there. Let's see if we can add our own. Kin Scoop looks like. Here we go. So this is the Kin Scoop feed. And here it brings up the article, if you will. With pictures embedded. Now if I wanted to share this, you just touch and hold items here and drag it. And here I can hit upload and share it with Facebook or Twitter. Though I'm not going to. Let's see how search works here. I'm not sure if it's universal or. It looks like you can search it for contacts and apps, but. We got Todd. But it doesn't look like you can search the web there too. That would have been neat. Contacts. Pull this up as you go down. Here's another man. Pulls in their picture from Facebook. You can have our praying mantis picture. It looks like, and then uh, it brings in their email address or other uh, contact information that you'd already have from that contact. So it's kind of neat that you know, it's ever changing Facebook picture, and all the pictures. Here's Russell, are displayed next to each contact. Here again all the updates. For me it's a little too much, you know, I don't <clears throat> always want to turn on my phone and see everybody's update status. Um, at least with mobile blur it would sort of just display one at a time. This is, you know, sort of everybody right in your face. Um, but I think some people will like that. Alright, now before I wrap up here I just wanted to Here's the unlock screen. Just wanted to go around and check out uh, the hardware of the phone. I didn't get to go over that just yet. Here you can see the keyboard uh, is actually pretty enjoyable to use. The keys offer good bounce. It's comfortably spaced here for bigger thumbs such as my own. You can also see it has this concave slide to it here. Um, so it, it kind of feels comfortable under your thumbs also. Moving around the phone. The slide itself feels very sturdy. Micro USB charging port. Here are the volume controls, a little out of the way. Uh, it's actually sort of really awkward um, because when you're on the phone, they're hidden behind this, so you're kind of like trying to get your uh, behind the front display here, so you're trying to grab it with your thumb. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, that's convenient, uh, especially at the top. I always like it up there because that way you can kind of push your, uh, pull your headphones uh, right out of it if it's in your pocket. This is the camera button. So hold that to launch it. This is the power button. Also locks the phone. All right, nothing underneath it. Here you have the five megapixel camera, single LED flash. We'll lift off the battery cover here. There's a little latch button on the bottom. And it's not that hard to do, but with a camera, here we go. It's a bit harder to do. All right, plastic cover, real light. Here's the battery. See if I can figure out how to pop it out. Doesn't look like it has an easy latch. 
Uh, no real need to pop it out there. There's not a micro SD card slot. So, no additional storage with that. I believe it has 8 gigs. I'll have to double check on that. So that's a quick look at the Kin 1 from Microsoft and Sharp. It's made by Sharp and it's available on Verizon Wireless. $49.99 with a two-year contract and a $100 mail-in rebate. This is Todd Hazelton with MobileBurn.com.